this is really important. You can't have phronesis, practical wisdom, by just being practical, by never having had the Sophia. Right? And you don't get phronesis necessarily just because you have the Sophia, just because you've got this great education. If you're not doing anything with it, you don't get phronesis. But you might have all the Sophia. Now you understand mathematics and physics and how everything ties together, but you're not doing it. So there's, this is a philosophy of action, right? That one gets the theoretical knowledge so that you can do something. I'm talking to a couple of you folks after class. There's one thing that gets lost all the time in this cave allegory is that the ultimate goal is to do something. Not to think something, but to do something. <coughs> okay, and phronesis, right, is the reflection of that meeting of the theoretical knowledge you have. Working, it to working itself through you out in the real world, back in the cave. Okay. That's, uh, that's a really important thing. Yeah, but uh, it's one, one word that really stood out to me on the lecture, you described it as statesmanship, mm -hmm. and I think that really embodies exactly what you're talking about, which is you know, putting, it, putting it all out there for others to also to kind of absorb and to express it mm -hmm. um, to your own people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the statesman, I mean, I, I think it's really good that statesman is really the from Mesa's side of what the philosopher is, right? Once you, it's statesmanship that the, that, the, that the leader can show. That a philosopher, frankly, can't because they don't, they don't do that. They don't do, they don't really do almost anything. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to move this on some. Um, so we understand then the difference between knowledge and understanding. You guys understand what's the difference? Uh, I have a question. Um, well, can you answer my question first? The difference between knowledge and understanding. Yes. Um, it's, on the, it's right on the graph there. Right, I, I guess knowledge, knowledge incorporates, incorporates the, the forms of good, so... Um, knowledge incorporates the forms? I, I, I guess knowledge, uh, only when you implement your knowledge do you truly understand it. Like, like that's what I guess is kind of all we're at making this model. Mm -hmm. well, then what's, this, what's this arrow at the bottom? that moves from left to right between knowledge and understanding. What is, what is it? It's growth and understanding, right? What's the mechanism by which that happens? Marcus? Education. Yes. And knowledge is what you have before you're educated? Or before you realize that you need to be educated? It's the Paideia system that takes those that are ready to achieve this little, you know, that particular level of understanding, right? It's the it's the, it's the Paideia system that takes them from one place to the next. That's really that's really important. Wait, so what what level of education do they have at the initial knowledge stage? I mean, it, I mean, it, it could just be var varieties of. Remember, we're starting out. Knowledge is represented here as just the shadows. So I don't care who you are, you've got something. You still have access towards the truth, and everybody's not. I mean, this is this, this is a holistic summary, right? And everybody's not going to get the pie deal. But to get to understanding, which is what you need for statesmanship, which is how you, which is how you develop and reflect the phronesis and all this other stuff, once again, we're talking about a very refined set of people that go through here. And what separates them is this pie deal system. We have to justify the just about 20 years that folks are spending doing that. And we've talked about this, I don't know, four or five times in class. So it should not be that confusing to people right now. I guess the one thing I was thinking about was Growth and understanding. So is that some people, the philosophy team, the people who are meant to teach others, go through the whole journey mm -hmm. and then they bring the students straight out into the direct arrow of their education? Well, the direct arrow, all that is, all the direct arrow represents is that there's a, that, that there's a growth happening as one goes through this thing. Time. Okay. That there's a growth happening on this other thing as parallel. You see what I mean? Because, and, I, and it's a good question, because I don't want anybody confused thinking you can get from knowledge to understanding without going up and, and seeing the form. You see what I mean? Like, you cannot get from one to the other. So this is happening as a parallel process. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so is there an implication that you need to kind of go back in the cave in order to uh, and show other people in order to achieve your own understanding? I, I think that that's absolutely true. Like, remember there's these tests all the way along with the guardians? The test of the philosopher king is the statesmanship. Is their ability to participate in the process of leading 
the polis to a happy or happier or the, the most happy existence possible. All right. You which, see what I mean? Yeah, so uh, I guess which is why in, in Plato's model of, of, of education that he lays out in the last chapter, the implement, like uh, doing those like, like an internship kind of thing, uh, what was part of the education, you get like 10 years of you know mathematical and like uh, all oh, yeah. kind of theoretical, and then you do like a couple of years of just ruling, but it's almost like an like a internship kind of thing. Yeah, because once again, it's the, it's about mating theory to reality. So he doesn't totally disvalue everything else. And something else that gets lost a lot with people that study this. Uh, is they want the affirmation of the theoretical side so much that it's worth actually doing all the philosophy and all the studies. That they forget that there's a point for it. Right? And that there's a value of the practical in play that's being brought out. There's an affirmation of uh, but that goes back once again and attaches to the fact that there's virtue for all the classes, not just one. Right? So there's, I mean, now all the, these things are all kind of hanging together. All these different conversations are hanging together. Um, I actually want to spend the next ten minutes here on the second page. Uh, and once again, so I recorded the, 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 the when we talked about the allegory of the cave. A lot of this has been repetition of that conversation. I mean, once again, by now, folks should be pretty clear on this stuff. Um, why don't you, what's your, what's your name again? What's your name? Sunil. Sunil. Let me get you to, so there's Greek terms that we've been getting. I just want to focus on a couple of them. Pleonexia, what was that? Pleonexia. What was that and where did it show up? Does somebody remember? Does somebody write off? Pleonexia. So that's important. It's the, it, it really is kind of the basis of what he means by harmony. It's right? It's things in their proper proportion. Could you draw a parallel between self-assuming and humility? I mean, I wouldn't at this point, meaning I, would, I wouldn't add new vocabulary. 